to keep it 99. I'd be lying sometimes. Eh, most people don't really know what the fuck's happening with offensive lines, all right? Uh, especially not dudes who are tuning in for fantasy football stuff end of August, early September. A lot of y'all are, <clears throat> are fantasy heads, so you, you've got a good grip on what's going on in the trenches with the hog mollies, them fat boys getting thick. Today, we're going to do a bit of a deeper dive for the running backs in fantasy and some of the offensive line moves that happen this offseason that are going to be the most impactful. Some of them are free agency moves. Some of them are draft picks. Some of them are just the improvement from year to year of offensive line play that y'all need to know about because we know that offensive line dictates a large portion of how effective a running back is on the ground, right? So today we are looking at six offensive lines that improved drastically that y'all need to know about that your idiot league mates certainly will not, but this will give you a competitive advantage in fantasy football this year. You know what else gives you a competitive advantage in fantasy football? Tucking your shirts in discontinuing the yelling and eating. So we are going to have in our draft guide offensive line rankings from 1 to 32 as well as analysis on them, right, going all the way down the list basically of things that y'all need to know. That's in the draft guide, which y'all can get on bdge.co, but the cheapest way to get it and the easiest way to get it is by signing up on PrizePix, prizepix.com, or the link down below will take you right to the app store when you use promo code BDGE and deposit $10 or more for the first time. Not only are you getting the draft guide for free that will have our rankings, offensive line, a bunch of whole gang shit that will succeed you in your fantasy football league, but you'll also get a 100% deposit match on prize picks. The shit is jiggly. It's there for the taking. It's ripe. It's wonderful. Prizepicks.com. Go hit it. This offensive line ranking list, what I did was scour the web, okay? I went through many, many different sources, many different sites that have their rankings up right now. It's PFF. It's Pro Football Network. It's you know, Fade the Noise. It's Fantasy Pros. It's all over the place, all right? It's like animal with celebrity nude leaks. If they are somewhere on the internet, I have scoured and I have found them. So let us get into this sheesh. Number one is Mr. Joe Mixon out there in Cincinnati and this offensive line, which went from one of the worst to one of the most improved on paper in the matter of a year. Joe Burrow lived on the ground last year, getting sacked in unbelievable amounts, and this team still produced the quarterback seven in fantasy, the wide receiver five and the wide receiver 13 in fantasy, and Joe Mixon, the running back three in fantasy. They had Ted Karras, Alex Kappa, and Lyle Collins to this offensive line. It was the only weak spot they had on the offense, and now it is shored up, and this gives this offense, I mean, they already had the ceiling, but this gives them such a safe floor. Now, Joe Mixon, the pass-catching work is still very much up for debate. We're, we're in this shit for like five years already. I think we know what his pass-catching statistics are probably going to surface around, but this makes damn sure that he's going to have a really safe rushing floor going into the year. It's going to be a great offense, great run blocking, hopefully, and a lot more goal line scores. So Cincinnati, if you didn't already have them high, light the fucking blunt up. Team number two on this list, the LA Chargers. okay? What they've invested into their offensive line over the last few years has paid off so handsomely, right? They signed Corey Lindsley from the Packers last year to play center. Dynamite signing Rashawn Slater last year, their first round pick. Absolute home run pick, all right? This dude was second team all pro in his rookie season. This year, what they go out and do? Use their first round pick again on Zion Johnson. First round pick, 17th overall to shore up their guard spot. Much like Cincinnati, they didn't have a lot of weak spots to begin with, and now they're just building on top of the liabilities that are now assets. Herbert, Williams, Allen, Eckler, Spiller, I want them all. Draft as many players from this team as humanely possible because their offensive line is one that's probably bordering around the top 12 range, maybe top 10 range, but is very, very likely to move from that you know, 12, 11, 10 spot up to five, four, three over the next year. And you want to be part of that evolution. So Austin Eckler gets a bump up just, you know, his volume might not be there, 
from the rushing standpoint with Isaiah Spiller in town now, but we know that his efficiency on the ground is going to be there because the run blocking line is going to be gorgeous. Isaiah Spiller makes me like him a lot, man. I really think we're going to see 10 carries a game from him. I think he's going to see a decent amount of goal line work. He's a guy that I'm targeting in the 12th, 13th, 14th round of my fantasy drafts because all the pieces around him are incredulous. Number three up on this list, the Kansas City Chief. I, I will admit it. I will admit it. Uh, I made a video a few weeks back talking about how Justin Herbert had a better line than Patrick Mahomes and KC. I got a lot of pushback in the comments, you know, so I want to do more research before I yelled back at you guys. And turns out y'all were right. KC's offensive line is elite. Nearly every service I ran through had them ranked as a top five line at worst, like number nine, as high up as like the number two offensive line. They had five new starters coming into last year. Five guys who are not starting for the Chiefs redid their offensive line. The rookies hit, the veterans hit, everything hit, and this offense, therefore, has a little bit of a safer floor than I am. Obviously, they have Patrick Mahomes, so the floor is going to be there, but he's more of like a ceiling play. If he doesn't have a good offensive line, he's just out there scrambling, doesn't have Tyreek Hill, whatever the case may be. This makes me a little bit more excited for Ronald Jones. It's not something that you hear a lot of people say often. It's hard to get excited about Ronald Jones. I think Ronald Jones takes the early down work at some point in the season, and, and he runs with it. I could see him getting 16, 17, 18 carries a game behind a good offensive line. He takes the goal line work, and guess what? He might become a problem. Might also become a problem for the brand if we keep fucking pushing him out there, but the offensive line is really, really good. Another reason to like Ronald Jones. I'm assuming Clyde edwards is going to keep falling back in drafts because everyone keeps yelling about how bad of a pick he is this year. He started as like a fifth-round pick, sixth-round pick. Now he's in like the eighth I'm not going to be comfortable drafting Clyde. This could be the number one ranked offensive line of all time. And I don't I don't want Clyde Everett's Hilaire unless you're getting him in like the, I don't even say 10th, probably like 11th, 12th round. That's how much I don't like Clyde. But they are the number three team on this list that y'all need to know about when it comes to their offensive line. They are really, 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 really good. And then we talk about the two New York teams. So you have the Jets, whose interior offensive line is really good. So they signed Lakin Tomlinson this offseason. He was a free agency. Uh, signing. He was one of the better run blocking guards in the NFL last year. So that was a big pickup for them. They have Connor McGovern, who was PFF's ninth ranked center last year. And then Elijah Vera Tucker. He allowed two sacks in over 1000 snaps as a rookie. So that interior is very, very good and they can build around it. And that's what's most important for running backs. And a guy like Brees Hall, Breezy's damn good on his own right and can create by himself. But imagine giving him openings and holes. He will be a problem. The biggest question around this offensive line is Makai Becton. Becton was their first round pick two years ago. He didn't play the full year as a rookie. And then last year had a ton of problems. He had a foot problem in the summer. He had a, a, an MCL sprain in week one that turned into somehow a year long injury. And now he's still not 100% recovered from it. There were reports that he's over 400 pounds last year. There's a lot of red flags going on there. Okay. This is a boom bust type player right now where if he booms, this is going to be a very good offensive line. If he busts, then we're going to see last year where it was injuries. It was, you know, poor conditioning. It was lack of the upside that they drafted him for, which could be a problem. But if things go correctly, they have the talent and the pieces in place for this O-line to create a system where this offense runs smoothly. It's why I like Zach Wilson as a late round guy. It's why I like the wide receivers attached to him, Garrett Wilson, Elijah Moore. And it's why we should like Brees Hall. I still think there's a, a, a very strong chance that Brees Hall does not live up to like top 12 hype in terms of like where his talent level is because that just happens to rookies in, in the second round right I do think he'll be the starter I don't think we see him play 75 percent of the snaps I know he's not going to get like a Najee type role very few running backs play 75 70 percent of their team snaps right very very rarely happens we might see a world where Michael Carter doesn't play a lot on early downs but if he's the two and four minute uh, drill running back, right, who only, who goes in at the end of the second quarter, end of the fourth quarter, that's where a lot of pass catching happens in games, right? A lot of the guys that are pass catchers in the NFL out of the backfield tend to rack up their stats at the end of games and at the end of halves. They usually pile on like three to four receptions. So when you look at the box score, you're like, oh, this guy had five or six catches in this game. They all usually happen in a very tight portion of the game. And we see it with Joe Mixon. He was continuously taken off the field in those situations. And that's why his numbers continue to be capped at like 40, 45, 50 catches. If he had that role, if Brees Hall has that role, it'll be big time. I have a tough time believing he gets it off the rip. Maybe he does, maybe he doesn't, but I think this O-line should be good enough to allow him to explode as a runner. And then you look at the New York Giants, man. Andrew Thomas, the Giants' first round pick from last year or two years ago, really, really miserable start to the rookie year. Last year, he turned into one of the best pass blocking tackles in the NFL. 
Then they use their first round pick, a top 10 pick on Evan Neal this year. So you might be looking at an instance where and most, most offensive lines build from the outside in where the elite ones have typically a tackle duo that's really, really strong. And this is setting up to be arguably in two years, one of the best tackle duos in the entire NFL. It's a reason why I think there is huge turnover here in New York, right? Brian Dable coming in, Saquon Barkley now two years removed from the ACL. I think this gives Daniel Jones a lot more opportunity to succeed at like a quarterback 16 type level where you're comfortable actually putting him into your lineup because we have Tony, we have Galladay, we have Barkley, and now we finally have a good system and a good offensive line in place for this guy to stay upright. The turnovers will come down because he won't be under pressure so much. So this makes me like Saquon a lot more. This makes me like the Giants offense overall a lot more. As you can see, got a lot of energy today. There's a reason why. Because I slept fucking beautifully last night. Do you know why I slept beautifully last night? Because as soon as the sun goes down, we put on our Felix Gray blue light blocking glasses. Let me hit you with some fucking sign. I sit here all day and I yell numbers and facts about, about the football players. But here's some facts about life, okay? When the sun goes down, when it's dark in your apartment, your body says, oh, it's dark. Let me start producing melatonin. Melatonin is the hormone that obviously makes you tired and puts you into deep REM sleep, okay? When your lights are on, when you're sitting in bed staring at your phone, light hits your eyes and your, your body says, don't start producing melatonin yet. Don't start shutting down. Don't go into sleep mode, okay? The way to protect yourself against that and to get your life cycle, your REM cycle, your circadian rhythm in sync is by blocking the shitty blue light that most of your apartment lights and your cell phone lights and your screen, your laptop, your phone, your cameras, whatever, gives off. I use Felix Gray glasses literally every single night. You've seen them in some of my videos up to this point. Uh, a lot of times I don't wear them during the day because you don't need to block light during the day. You want that shit to come through, but I need to put them on to let you know how sexy you also look in these Felix Gray glasses. Most of the blue light blocking glasses out there have these big orange tints on them, and they look terrible, and you can't actually wear them in public. These, however, they're like a dub. Look how smart they make me look. You see me from the side, you're like, this motherfucker is a scientist. You're goddamn right I'm dropping science on you right now. Felix Gray. Blue light blocking glasses, they look good, they make you feel good, and more importantly, they make you sleep good. I know I should be saying well instead of good, but I'm on a rant right now, so just let me fucking roll. FelixGray.com. When you use the promo code BDGE15, you're getting 15% off. You might even get free shipping. I don't know what it's like at this point, but you're getting the discount. High-ass quality product. One of my favorite purchases I've ever made under $100. I promise you, you will not be disappointed with the results you get from these. If you are someone who stares at screens all day, these are a fucking godsend. They will make sure your eyes are not strained by the end of the day. You know who else is not going to feel a lot of strain by the end of the day on Sundays? And that's Dak Prescott and Ezekiel Elliott. Because I don't think people realize, you know, most people, let me get the energy back up. Lights. I don't think most people realize that the Dallas Cowboys offensive line is really fucking good again. They are probably top five. Most people don't think of them the way that they thought of them a couple years ago because they were dominant for so long, but they are really, really good again. They lost Lyle Collins. I'm aware of that, right? Lyle Collins now moved to Cincinnati. It's one of the reasons we like Cincinnati more because their offensive line is good for adding a dude like this. But this is straight from PFF. Lost in the hoopla, great fucking word, of Lyle Collins' offseason situation and his eventual departure from the Cowboys was the fact that Terrence Steele made him expandable in the first place. Very, very few people actually follow offensive line play. Very few people know the depth on offensive lines. They know the big names like Lyle Collins. They don't know the development going on behind the second, third, fourth, sixth round players that these teams drafted and whether or not they're good. You need people like me to yell at you about them. And Terrence Steele did a fantastic fucking job filling in, and he will be the replacement for Lyle Collins. Is, uh, is he Lyle Collins? No, but he has a lot of promise, and he played really, really well last year. Tyron Smith and Zach Martin are still key pieces, still dominating uh, on this offensive line. Steele, again, is emerging as a player, and they use their first-round pick on a tackle, Tyler Smith out of Tulsa this year. So this offensive line, again, is going to be very, 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 very good. It's just another reason to love this offense, but more importantly, it's why I love Zeke. Zeke is going to continue to eat into the carries, get the goal line work, I'm telling you, we're underrating what Zeke is going to do in the pass-catching game because of Amari Cooper gone and Michael Gallup being hurt. This is still a pass-first team, and when wide receivers tend to leave, when there's vacated targets, a lot of the times they go to, if you don't have proven wide receivers behind those guys that leave, 
a lot of times they go to the running backs, man. And we've seen Zeke have these 60, 70, 80 target seasons. And I think we're quietly about to see another one. And because the run blocking line is awesome, I think Zeke will have a very, very, very solid year. All right. So that wraps it up for six players, six teams. Joe Mixon and Cincy. We got Eckler and Spiller in the charges. Uh, we've got Ronald Jones for KC. We've got Brees Hall in New York. We've got Saquon in New York. And we've got Zeke in Dallas. Now, I think I might, depending on what you guys want to see, I might do the flip, the reverse of this, and talk about you know some of the bottom 10 or bottom 5, 6, 7 teams in terms of offensive line rankings and why we might need to move some of these players down our list, our rankings, which again will be available in our season-long draft guide, which goes live on August 1st. You can cop it at bdge.co, but the easiest and the least expensive way is through prizepicks.com. You could download the app, which the link will be right down below. Use promo code BDGE when you do so. Uh, and let me know what you want to see going forward. Hit that subscribe button, comment, yell at me, do whatever you got to do to uh, to sleep at night. Go check out Felix Gray to make sure that does happen. BDGE15 for 15% off. I love y'all. I'm out.